All right, hey guys, so a lot of you asked me how to set up a beta 1.7.3 server after I posted my server video for back to beta, and I'm just gonna do a quick tutorial of how I did this. Um, all the links will be in the description for everything you need. Um, the basic gist of it is first thing you're gonna do is come to the first link. Well, first thing you're gonna do, make sure you have Java 8 installed. I think most of you should, but if not, I'll leave the link for that right here. And if you're running a Windows PC, just download the Windows Offline 64-bit and install it. But um, next thing you'll do is download the server pack I have here. And you're just going to click download, etc. Ignore that. Don't click the ads. Hopefully most of you have ad block. Um, and then it'll show up in your download folder. So here's my downloads folder. And I would open it up. Here it is. And I would extract right here everything you need to the desktop. Keep it simple. Take this. Here is the server jar. So this is a craft bucket build for beta 1.7. And this is a run.bat file. So it's a batch file that starts the server. You can open it up by going into Notepad, pulling up Notepad, and you can just drag and drop the run file in here. And this will show you like how to start the server. This is how much RAM is allocated to the server. This is just two gigabytes. If you want to do less, you can take these numbers and change them to 1024, and that'll be one gigabyte. Or if you want to do more, you can just multiply. So say I want four gigabytes, it should be 4096. Or if I want eight gigabytes, 8192, I think. And uh, you change both of these numbers to whatever you want your RAM to be. Um, take that, save it, make sure it's in the same folder as the server file, and click, double click it, and it'll run. So it's going to start and prepare the spawn area here, and start a new world file. Give that a second to do its thing. Okay, now if you want to stop it, type stop, hit enter, it'll save. And the important part is, since the authorization servers for beta are offline, you can just open a notepad file, doesn't matter which, I just opened up the ops one since it's empty, and drag in the server properties file. And these will be your settings. You need to make sure the online mode is set to false, because if it tries to connect to the authorization servers, nothing will happen, I think it just crashes the client, gives you some sort of error message, something like that. You need to make sure it's set to false, and you can change your settings here. I haven't gone over, every time I go over 14 view distance it crashes, I don't know why. Um, I'm not an expert at this stuff, but this is what worked for me. So I just set it to 14 at the highest. You can put your whitelist to true um, if you want to, and it will still honor the whitelist. So you can come in here and add like my name, and that'll be a whitelist. Add it to a whitelist. Um, same thing with ops. If you want to make yourself an operator, just add your name. Make sure you save. And then when you run the server, it'll start in offline and secure mode. And if you have the game, you can test it by opening up, obviously, the correct version and testing it with localhost if you're hosting on the same PC that you're on. Um, and here I am, I'm connected. So there are some plugins. I don't know much about the plugins. I know the main plugin I was using with uh, Authme, which adds a level of like server authorization. I don't know how secure it is, uh, to be perfectly honest, but it's a plugin where when you log into the server, you pr uh, type slash login and you do a password every time you log in. And I think it's supposed to add an extra layer of security because um, the authorization servers are down. There's probably better ways of doing this. I'm sure people will come out and tell me better ways of doing this, but um, it's worked for me. And I think the basic thing is that like, if you just whitelist, since the authorization servers don't want to be online, if somebody comes in and changes their name with a hacked client or whatever, they could just get in as long as that name's on the whitelist. So I think that password is supposed to add an extra layer of security. But again, I don't know how exploitable that is, but I don't know gives me some sort of peace of mind so I put it on there um, and the way you do that is you would drop these files in the plugins folder so let me see here plugins and you take like whatever plugin you want drop it in the plugins folder click run 
and it should run the plugins and add some sort of settings for the plugins. So here's like a config for the plugin. You can open that up in Notepad and configure it. And that's going to vary plugin to plugin. So that's how you can connect locally on your local network. Um, and then if you're using a server host, uh, we use Apex Hosting. You can upload this server jar to their server, and that process is going to be a little different from server to server. But obviously, the same thing you have to do is set it to offline mode for this version of Minecraft and make sure that it's not trying to connect to the authorization servers because they're no longer in use. Uh, as far as if you're hosting a server on your home network, you're going to need the port forward, and that also is going to be a little bit different from router to router. So you need to look up, figure out your router's login information to get um, into your router settings, and there should be some sort of default gateway that you go to. So basically, you'd enter it into your browser like 192.168.whatever yours is. Um, and the way you would find that is by going to, you would want to type in cmd, run your command prompt, and type in ipconfig, just like that. And it'll show you your IPv4, and it should show you your default gateway. So I would enter this number here into my web browser to get to my default gateway. Then there should be a username and password usually that would probably be on the bottom of your router. Again, varies from router to router. And you can get in and port forward. You'll have to look up how to specifically port forward on your router. Um, but you want to open port 25565 by default and forward it to your IPv4 address, which you would find here. The main thing with setting up the server if you're running it locally is make sure your ports are forwarded and make sure your server is set to offline mode. If anybody has any questions, you can put them in the uh, comment section. I'll try my best to answer them, but again, not an expert at this stuff. Uh, this is just what's worked for me and a simple way to just play with friends. So with that, hope you all have a good day. See ya.